Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for SPSS. This screencast gives you some advice on judging if your data is normally distributed and includes section 8.4, how to check whether your data have a normal distribution using the chi-squared goodness of fit test. If your data is normally distributed, then you can use a set of tests called parametric tests that are more powerful in discriminating significant from non-significant results. This is because the equation expects your data to conform to a pattern called the Gaussian or normal distribution and so can make more accurate predictions. Thus, researchers often like to do tests to determine if the data is normal and we will outline some in this screencast. But please note that absolute justification that a small data set is normally distributed is almost impossible to do. One common approach can be illustrated using the data from table 8.3 shown in the bar chart. We can calculate a mean and standard deviation from this data and then predict the distribution of values we should get if the data is normal, as we can see from the underlaid bar chart in pink. We can then perform a chi-squared or similar test to see if our values are consistent with those expected values. This generates a probability and if it is below 0.05, we can state the observed and expected data are significantly different and that our data is not normal. How to do this chi-squared test is detailed in the book, however, many programs have several other tests to determine if your distribution could be normal, and in this screencast we will outline the use of the Shapiro-Wilk test, which is the most accurate test for small sample sizes. Again, a significant result indicates that your data is not normally distributed. This is an important consideration with these tests. They tell you if your data is not normal. What they do not do is tell you that your data is normal. What if the p-value was just above 0.05? The result would be non-significant, but could we really state the data was normally distributed with any certainty? Fortunately, there are a couple of other indicators we can assess. Normal data sets are symmetrical, so we can look at the skew value, which should be zero for a perfectly symmetrical data set. This is also why we find the mean and median are the same in normally distributed data. In general, a skew value between minus two and two can be consistent with a normal distribution. We can also calculate a kurtosis value. In a normally distributed data set, the data tails off from the central position in a defined way. The kurtosis value can indicate if your data tails off too quickly or slowly. A kurtosis value between minus two and two can be consistent with a normally distributed data set. Using these three measures, we can at least give some justification for using a parametric test to analyze our data with even if we cannot state with absolute certainty that our data set is normally distributed. I have entered the data from table 5.8, which consists of the body length of 50 ladybirds of the species Adala bipunctata. The question is whether this data can be considered normally distributed. This is how I have set up my variables. You may wish to pause the screencast. So let's do the test. I track up to analyze and click. A submenu appears. Track down to descriptive statistics, a second submenu appears, and I track across and down to explore and click. A window opens. I need to tell SPSS, which is my dependent variable. I select in this case the variable body length and enter it into the dependent list box by pressing the selection arrow. I now track over to plots and click and select the normality plots with tests. I track down and press continue. I now press OK to run the test. SPSS gives us several output boxes. The first box I'm interested in is the test of normality. We can see that the Shapiro-Wilk test has given us a significance of 0.231. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A probability of 0.231 is above our 0.05 transition probability, indicating that we cannot reject the null hypothesis, and that there is not a significant difference between the distribution of our data and that expected from the data if it was normally distributed. However, this p-value of 0.231 is a long way from a value of 1, which would indicate a perfect correlation between the observed and expected values. And although I would never expect my data to be perfect, 
I would like more evidence on which to base my conclusion. In the box above the test for normality, termed descriptives, we can see that the kurtosis value is minus 0 0.294, which is close to zero and within our minus two to two guide range, suggesting that the data tails off appropriately. Further, the skewness value is minus 0 0.047, which is even closer to zero and also within our minus two to two guide range and suggests the data is relatively symmetrical. Something confirmed by the mean and median values being similar at 5.08 and 5.00. Taken all together, I fear that I can make justification for my data being normally disputed and that it would be appropriate to use parametric tests for further analysis. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.